Buffy, there are so many facets to your particular diamond, it's hard to know exactly where to start. But I think we'll confine ourselves to the musical topic. When did you begin to be aware that you were musically inclined? Well, the first time I saw an instrument was when I was four, when my parents brought a piano to the house. They had somebody's old beat-up piano that was given to them. And I sat down and began to play with it, which is what I think children should do with music. I played with it as a toy, and within a couple of days, I was playing my own music. Um, what I was doing, actually, was making sounds that pleased me. I wasn't playing songs that someone told me, all right, now this is a song, this is what you're supposed to do, this is music with a capital M, so you go to school and you practice all the time and learn it. What I was doing was, was bringing the sum total of my four years on the planet to a toy, and I was expressing myself what I had in my mind on, on this musical instrument. What I was doing was pleasing my own ears. I think this is where music is at with me. It's, um, it's not work, it's my greatest joy. Now, did you continue playing, as you put it, your own music at that time, or did you try and pick up songs which you were hearing? No, I just played my own music. Um, I wasn't in a situation where there were piano teachers around, although when my parents realized that I could, <clears throat> that I could play music naturally like this, they did take me to a, a music teacher, an old man, and he said, no, don't, don't force her into taking lessons. And I think it was the best advice I could have had. It's the advice that I'd give any parent who discovers himself with a, a very fortunate musical child. I think most people are a lot more talented than they realize. And I think that, unfortunately, the way that music is taught by most teachers is uh, very, very difficult. Um, not only piano, but guitar, of course. Guitar is taught all backwards in the wrong tunings in a way that makes no sense. And I think I can teach the average person who likes music, who's tried unsuccessfully to play the guitar, I think I could teach him how to satisfy himself through music within, you know, a couple hours, just sitting down and explaining some very, very simple basic things. Well, that's a pretty ambitious claim. I'd like to see it done. Well, it has to do with pleasure, not yeah, work. Right. Music is pleasure. When did the lyrics start coming for your songs? Oh, I don't know, just right away. My songs are like dreams, you know? I mean, I don't sit down with a pen and pencil and write them out. Just whatever thoughts happen to be occurring to me while I'm pleasing myself through a sound is what turns into a song. Yeah. I mean, the, the, um, the frosting that comes on the cake is, is baked at the same time as, as the cake itself. It's something that happens in the oven up here. Yeah, it's yeah. not something that happens outside or on paper. And uh, I played the piano just to myself. I was really shy, and I didn't, play for, I didn't play for anyone. And I think it's unfortunate that kids start out with a piano if they're shy, because a piano is in a place, yeah? yeah. And you have to go there, and probably there are people around. You have to sit down, put on a recital, you know? It's embarrassing, <laughs> yeah? I mean, if you're shy, it doesn't matter how good it is, if you're shy, you just don't feel like doing it that way. But with a guitar, which I got when I was about 17, I mean, you can take it off in your room with you, and you can really express yourself, because you can hold it to yourself. And uh, you can take it off in the woods, so you can, you can bring it in the loo. I mean, <laughs> it's, <laughs> really a, it's a very personal instrument. Yeah. For me, the music has always been really personal, no matter how strong and how much sense it makes. It's still very definitely the way I feel about it. Now, you don't read or write music still? No. I can sketch out a melody line. Oh, I see. But I can't read it back very well, so it doesn't really make <laughs> any no sense. Now, I was asking this question because I wanted to know how you then committed the, the tune to paper. Well, lucky I live in the age of the tape recorder, and I have a real good memory for sound. I think that has a lot to do with what people will call talent, is your memory for sound and your interest in sound. Same thing with a painter. I mean, you have to be sensitive. Your eye has to be as sensitive as a camera or a piece of film to color. And then you have to be really interested in combining new, new forms of color, not for someone else, but for yourself, just because you take to do it. Yeah. Now, your first hit, in my memory, was Universal Soldier. This is here in Australia. Was this a hit for you elsewhere around the world? Yeah, it was, and it was uh, recorded by a lot of people. My original version of it, when I first wrote it, was banned. This is before the time of blowing in the wind and yeah. such. Yeah such uh, mild introductions to the world of sense <laughs> mm. in music. Yes. And uh, my version was banned, and then it was recorded by a group in the States called the Highwaymen. And their version was almost completely banned, too, but did make a little splash. Donovan heard me sing it in England in concert, and it's been translated in a lot of different languages all over the world. 
do you do you get great pleasure in hearing other people perform your songs because they are such a personal part of you, aren't they? Well, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm flattered, you know. Yeah. I mean, sometimes sometimes I think somebody's, you know, kind of torn the song apart. <laughs> sometimes when people sing Until It's Time For You To Go, and a lot of people have recorded that. Yes. Elvis Presley and Barbara Streisand and on and on and on. Would have to be your most successful song. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, sometimes people will change the melody around, yeah, or they'll change the words around. And that's a bit of a shock. You shout us somewhat, do you? Yeah, but I don't take it that personally. I'm kind of used to it now, and and uh, the way I feel about songs is that once I've sung them, then uh, I mean I agree with the with the public domain law that once you've presented a song to people, it doesn't do to keep your hands on it and try to hold it back. You have to let people have it and and do what they want with the song. It's one of the very few completely free things in the universe these days. I mean, it, you can copyright it so that someone else won't say that he wrote it, but. Um, it's not fair to uh, to keep it from people's free expression. Buffy, you do have somewhat of a reputation for writing what may be termed protest songs, or certainly point songs. Mm -hmm. Do you write the lighter ones, the comedy songs, for relief? What what caused you to write them? <laughs> Just because I'm in a good mood that day. <laughs> I write the songs that have a strong meaning because I feel strongly about something. Only I don't spend 24 hours a day feeling bad, you know. I mean, some of the songs that I write are not really for my performances, yeah. I mean, I don't write them for um, for my show. I don't sit down and write out a show, you know, like a Las Vegas review or plan a record that way. But when I do plan what I'm going to give to the people, I realize that most people, in Australia especially, are hearing my brand of reality for the very first time. And uh, reality isn't all serious, I think. I mean, reality to me has a lot to do with things that are quite serious, yeah, but other things that are really full of joy. Buffy, thank you very much for your time. You brought your guitar down. Could we utilize it, please, just briefly? Okay. Thank you very much. It's just a little tiny piece of a song. You're not a dream. You're not an angel. You're a man. I'm not a queen. I'm a woman. Take my hand. We'll make a space in the lives that we planned and you will stay until it's time for you to go